My name is Masi Bogori Kairichi. I'm a research scientist by profession and uh, I'm a mother of seven and uh, that's four girls and three boys and uh, my three boys are the exciting part not that the other four are not exciting but my sons uh, who are 10 years old uh, were born premature and uh, they have a condition called autism so for the past uh, four years about four years I had to leave my research work and focus on um, guiding and uh, looking for um, the best interventions for my sons who have autism. So now I am a stay-at-home a stay-at-home mom, as well as an advocate of um, autism. So let me talk about Ricky. Uh, my, my three sons are, who are in the autism spectrum. We have Ricky, who has always been mild. Then we have Eric who has been moderate and Lenny who is on the severe. So all of them have been doing great coming down on the coming down towards the normal the, 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 the neurotypical scale. And uh, Ricky, when we first went to Neurogen Brain and Spine Institute uh, to do our first stem cell, he was able to actually gain his speech. And uh, then, apart from just getting speech, we were advised Ricky now is ready to join the regular, regular school. So when we came back, uh, we removed him from the special, special, um, special needs school, and we took him to a regular school at uh, uh, kindergarten two. So he was in kindergarten two, then pre unit and then now he needed to go to grade one and uh, i was really very scared about uh, ricky joining grade one because i was like now where you know kindergarten is still a small is still a small a small center and the kids are fewer but now when you go to grade one it means that actually you, you know it's a bigger school uh if it's a break time uh, they will all meet outside there so I was extremely, I was beyond, let me not talk about worried, I was depressed actually. I was going down a depression curve because I was envisioning now Ricky still, he is not able to socialize. And uh, even myself, I could remember in my younger years when we were in school, we had all those, uh, we had some kids who were always by themselves and uh, that when you go out of PE, the other class, they are telling you, oh, there is somebody in our class who is like this. And you go there and surround this child and you just become mean to them. Of course, as children, you don't know. But the schools didn't have what it takes to, to focus on such a child and ensure this child is, um, is cushioned from this thing from his peers. So that stuck so much in my mind and I was really worried what will happen to Rick. At least in the special needs school, you know, they are always taken care of and there is no bullying. So I was, I was, I was scared, Doreen. I was really scared until um, one teacher is the one who told me. So he kept sending me to different schools. I would go there, talk, go to the school, get an appointment, review the school. I would come back and say, my heart is not settled. Mm -hmm. Then out of the blue, he was like, what about, what if I took, what about this, a school called the Waldorf? I had honestly never heard of it. So he told me about it and uh, he pulled his laptop. We went through the, the, the Waldorf website. And as I was reading it, I was like, this is where Ricky needs to be, you know? And uh, I looked at the curricula, which is really, you could tell that the curricula is very, it's is not like our, our typical 844. It, 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 even the vision, the mission, I just fell in love with it because I felt this is it. And then it's beyond that, you could see it's offering um, a, whole some, a whole person. It's talking about a family. In fact, it talks about the family. The school is a family. So I was able to come to the Lovington campus 
and uh, my son Ricky went through an assessment and actually he fitted very well. I, I was very shocked because he skipped grade one. We came in in a January and your program here starts uh, in s September. So Ricky joined grade two, second semester. So he skipped grade one and, and grade two first semester. And I was very scared that you will not be able to fit with the program, the mo your special movement and the way you do your things. But uh, I, I was amazed that um, he has done really, really well. And uh, I am very grateful to, to God for uh, placing Ricky in this, in this environment. So, uh, like you know, Doreen, uh, autism, one of the areas that they are deficit in is social interaction and, 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 and confidence. And uh, this is something that has really surprised us here as, as a family because uh, Ricky's social skill has grown from almost non-existent to where we are right now. Ricky is talking about, you know, who is your best friend? I mean, honestly, I never even imagined Ricky would have a concept of best friend. And for sure, Ricky has a best friend here. I mean, that is a first for Ricky in this school. This school has a lot of social, the social interactions, parents, uh, there is that calendar of parents in a class, you organize a social event and, and, and the children come and the parents come and that's really another unique thing that I love because um, there's, there's, there's once she, Ricky was invited to a social event where the parents were not invited. And um, I was, it was the first time I told this parent, you know, Ricky is like this, like this. Are you sure? You know, please be careful. Uh, he might damage the TV. He might do this. And every 30 minutes I would call this mama. She, he was like, Mama Ricky, please just let Ricky, so all the things you said about Ricky, nothing has happened. Let the boy just have fun. And then recently he actually was invited by his best friend for a sleepover. I mean, can you imagine Ricky <laughs> going for a, a sleepover? And he was very excited and he came with many stories. And again, I kept calling and being told, Mercy, just relax. So that is something that any parent or family of a child with autism would want to see their autistic child grow to. Then there is the confidence. I mean, Ricky's confidence is just at another level. He can self-express, he can argue with you, he can, he, can, he can talk his way out, he can beseech you, he can con you into something, you know? He will pull out that smile and he tell you, oh, please, you know? I mean, that kind of engagement, even literature says that uh, children with autism have no emotions, I mean, Ricky, that's, we've seen his emotions full, you know, from the best to when he is very angry to when he has a tantrum. That is really another thing that I am very grateful uh, for because he didn't have it. Then uh, uh, with, 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 with here, uh, Ricky's uh, self-confidence, you know, his self-confidence is really at a higher level. I'm told even in class he will ask a question, he will speak his mind, and that is something so nice to see. And uh, it, it, it's not in every environment that can be able to bring that out into a child. The fact that, yes, academic is important, but it doesn't override the other aspects of the child. I think that is really the hallmark of the world. Of That's what I love, it's balancing. It's not about going crazy about scoring A's, you know, it's about caring that this child is able to, to, to mix up, communicate, because one of, the, one of the issues and what I was so much worried about when looking for a school is I was very worried about uh, Ricky developing anxiety and, uh, and, and, and the depression, which is very common with children with autism as they grow older. As they start seeing how they are, you know, they are, because they feel it definitely. That isolation, we are all designed, 
human beings are designed to be social and to be close. So this child who is always on himself, by himself, definitely with time you find that it, they develop anxiety and then um, they also develop uh, uh, depression. But I like here that during the, during the, the PE time, the children are not just by themselves. The teachers, the staff are with the children. And for specifically like Ricky, the teachers will be telling the others, hey, get Ricky. Ricky, throw the ball to the other person. Ricky, do this. You see, that is intentionally seeking him and helping him to engage with his, with his peers. And that doesn't happen in our normal schools as we know them. You know, you go for recess and the staff go to the staff room and the bell is rung and the children come back. You don't know what happened. So really that is what I love most about, about, about the world of... Oh, Doreen, um, recommending. I have recommended four of my friends. And I actually, whenever I have an opportunity and parents ask me, why is Rick doing so well? Where, where, which school is he? You know, and I tell them, Ricky goes to the, 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 the Nairobi world of, and a lot of things, like the Nairobi world of, what is that? Where is that? And then I try to explain. So I know two parents, I've, I've, I've talked to them, they have been to this school trying to look for uh, for a space and uh, there are two other two other friends of mine they are trying to prepare their children you know the issue of concentration and, and hyperactivity that they can bring here to my family I am hoping that when we come from Neurogen next year that Lenny and Eric can really be able to join his brother here so that he can also grow from you know all this unique unique setup that uh, they, are, they are not finding uh, in the specialist school and i am hoping that they can be at a level that, that that they can fit here i know that it's not every child who can fit here but uh, definitely yes this is this is the place for transition from special needs school to a regular school